Uh, like everybody here, I'm extraordinarily grateful to you for your career at public service, and I feel very badly about what you've had to endure. Uh, like uh, your colleagues, uh, you don't complain. Uh, you're doing your job. Uh, I feel badly about the insults, the tweet this morning, uh, the fact that you were smeared, not fired. But the question, as you know, is not how you were treated. Mm -hmm. The question is why the president did what he did and whether what he did was a breach of trust. The question really is about whether the president of the United States, any president, has the authority to withhold congressionally approved aid to condition a White House meeting on extracting from a foreign leader a willingness to assist him in his political campaign. That's the question. And that brings us to you as part of this story, because the question is, why were you fired from that position? I want to read a portion of the president's call on July 25th with President Zelensky. And this is the painful part when you first heard about it. The former ambassador from the United States, the woman, was bad news. And the people she was dealing with in Ukraine were bad news. So I just want to let you know that. The other thing, he goes right into this. There's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution. And a lot of the people want to find out about that. So whatever you can do with the attorney general would be great. You in indicated in response to uh, my colleague, Mr. Castro's question, uh, that if you were asked to approach a foreign leader uh, and condition American support on their being involved in our campaign, you would refuse to do that. Yes. Yes. And are you, you're aware now, but I don't know if you were then, but that July 25th phone call occurred the day after uh, Director Mueller reported that the interference in our 2016 campaign was not from Ukraine. It was active, concerted, energetic, and uh, by the Russians, correct? Yes. Now, <clears throat> as ambassador, you had no knowledge of whatever it is President Trump ultimately seems to have wanted to get for cooperation in this investigation. Isn't that that's correct? Yes. Right. Now, you've been asked about whether a president has authority to replace an ambassador. And you have agreed that that's the president's prerogative. Yes, that's true. But that assumes that the reasons are not related to the po personal private political interest of the president at the expense of our national security, right? Yes. And you've been the target of insults from the president. You join some very distinguished company, by the way, Senator McCain, General Kelly, a man I admire, I think all of us do, General Mattis. We're not here to talk about that unless the reason you get insulted is you did today, essentially blaming you for Somalia, is if this is another step by the president to intimidate witnesses. He didn't intimidate you. You're here. You've endured. But there are other people out there that can expect the Trump treatment if they come forward? That's a question for us. Now, you also indicated that the president has a prerogative to appoint a non-career person. And to be candid, Republican presidents and Democratic presidents have done that. The Mr. Sondland's uh, transcript is out. And he was someone who indicated 
that everything hinged this meet the meeting the White House meeting and the release of the vital uh, defensive aid everything hinged on the president President Zelensky being willing to do that investigation that would benefit the Trump campaign. You, you're aware of that? Yes. And you've indicated that's something that you would not agree to do. Yes. And Sunland was quite willing to do. Apparently so. I thank you for your professional service, and I yield thank you. back. Thank you.